Pepsi-Cola, P-E-P-S-I. That's your smartest cola buy. Pepsi-Cola presents Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Harding, Counter Spy. Calling Washington. United States Counter Spy. Especially appointed to investigate and combat the enemies of our country, both at home and abroad. Tonight, the case of the Sweet State Murders. Another counter spy report to the American people. Brought to you each Tuesday and Thursday by Pepsi Cola. Pepsi Cola hits the spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. That's right, you heard what they said. Two full glasses of sparkling Pepsi from one big 12-ounce bottle. You're getting an extra glass full. And what a delicious glass full. The most refreshing, delightful cola that ever tickled your taste. You can't top Pepsi's tangy flavor. And that big, big bottle saves you money, goes twice as far. Pepsi's America's big, big favorite. And America's biggest cola value. So why take less when Pepsi's best? Whenever you reach for refreshment... Remember, why take less when Pepsi's best? And now, to Counter Spy. It was a moonless night in the small southern town of Gulfport, near the Mexican border. In a dimly lit, evil-smelling corridor of a rooming house, two shadowy men stood before a closed door. Um, you sure this is the room? Positive, Sheriff. Let's go in. Wait, wait, Tom. Get away from the door. Wait for Get back alongside it. That's it. Let's see if it's unlocked. Yeah, it is unlocked. No light in the room. Now listen. I'm going to shove the door open. Shine my light in. You stay right where you are till I tell you. Okay, Sheriff. What the... Come on, Tom. What is it? Look. There on the floor. What? It's Frenchy. What's left of him? His chest. Look at his chest. What? I don't know what did it. I never seen anything like this. It's obvious, Uncle Cy. The big shots in the sweepstakes racket found out Frenchie was going to talk to a newspaper reporter. Me. So they killed him. I never saw anything so... so horrible. It's an outrage, Tom. But if they think they've stopped me, they got another thing coming. I found something in Frenchie's room tonight which just might lead me to the men we want. Uh-huh. What did you find? I'll tell you all about it when I bring in the story. I've got to be on my way. Yeah, no, no, Tom. One man's been murdered already. I don't want anything to happen to you. Oh, now, look, Uncle Si, this is a terrific story. Thousands and thousands of Americans are buying tickets on what's supposed to be an official Mexican sweepstakes. But the Mexican government says it doesn't know anything about yes, it. Yes, 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 I and know. And tonight, that. the racketeers proved they're murderers, too. Is the Gulfport Gazette going to laugh that off? That's not the point, Tom. I can't let my own nephew risk his life. Your nephew has to take the same chance as any other reporter would take. Mm-hmm. See you later, Uncle Si. Hello? Is Tom Fisher there? No, he's not, but this is his wife, Ruth. Can I take a message? Yeah. Tell him to lay off the big story he's working on. Unless he wants the same thing to happen to him that happened to Frenchie. Tom, that man on the phone frightens me. Darling, please drop the story you're working on. Drop the biggest story that ever came my way? Don't be silly, Ruth. But I don't want anything to happen to you. Nothing's going to happen to me. Now, where... Oh, oh here it is. What's that? Oh, something I picked up in Frenchie's room. 
Looks like a poker chip. Uh huh. Well, I've got to get moving. Where are you going? No, no, no. You're forgetting the rules. When Papa goes out on a big story, Mama doesn't ask questions. Tom, don't go. Hey, stop it now. Relax. I'll be back soon. Hey, you in the launch. You got room for one more? I'm going out to the gambling ship, too. Hiya, Toro. Yes, Mom. Big spending crowd aboard tonight, Toro. Here's the take from the wheel so far. How much, Monk? Twenty-one hundred bucks. And the launch is still bringing the suckers out here to this ship. Not bad, huh? No, no, he's not bad. What do you count for? Don't you trust me? Just as far as, uh, how do you say? I can see you. Oh, now, look, Toro. No, do I'm enjoyed to count the money. Much money. Huh. You ought to be having the time of your life, then, the way that stuff is rolling in. The door, Mom. The back door. Okay. Who is it? Me, Johnny. Open up. Yeah, all right. Get in. Okay, okay. Get that gun out of my back. What the? That's Tom Fisher, the reporter. What? That's right, Toro. Got him snooping around below decks. You know where. So, Senor Fisher. You uh, have found what you expected below, huh? Why, I... I don't know what you mean. Uh, no. You're a poor liar, Senor. Nor are you wise. You should have heeded the advice conveyed to your wife. Then she uh, would not become a widow. A what? Now listen, Toro. You, you know, senor, that I was once a matador, a fighter of bulls. No, I... Uh... This case contains two of my favorite swords. This gold-hilted one was presented to me by enthusiastic aficionados in Mexico City. After a corrida in which I dispatched six of the bravest and fiercest bulls ever seen in any arena. As you see, from the side the blade appears to be a straight. But if you hold it this way, observe how the blade curves to penetrate to the bull's heart. And now, senor bull... I am sighting on your heart. From Counter Spy Field Office, Charleston, South Carolina, to David Harding, Washington. Still another distributor of phony Mexican sweepstakes tickets apprehended here. Terrified, the man pleaded his arrest to be kept secret. Denied knowing leaders of racket, but said had been warned that any squealer met horrible death by a golden sword. The paper those phony sweepstakes tickets were printed on is a 34-pound super newsprint stock. 
Oh, it was made by the Southwest Pulp and Paper Mill in Arengo, Texas. Texas, huh? You get a list of their customers, Peter? We can't get that for a day or two. The mill had a fire last week. The records are in a mess. Oh, fine. They told me, though, a couple of hundred newspapers buy super newsprint for their rotogravure sections. This particular grade. In addition to printers all over the country. That's many, huh? I told you this would be tough. Well, maybe we can expedite matters. What did the lab say about the ink used on the phony tickets? Well, it's a standard black ink, Chief. Colored ink or some special variation of black might be traced. But standard black is practically impossible. Well, how about the printing press? It's a flat bed press. Printing in large sheets of paper, not in continuous rolls. Well, as soon as we get that list from the paper mill, I'll instruct our agents. Uh, yes, what is it, Miss Ferguson? This report just came in from Texas, Mr. Harding. I think you'll want to see it. Oh, thank you. Well, I like your new hairdo, Alan. Thank you, Mr. Peters. Only it's not new. Uh-oh. What is it, there? Listen to this report. Two nights ago, a man called Frenchy, a small-time grafter, was found murdered in a rooming house in Gulfport, Texas. He'd been killed by a long stiletto or sword that mutilated his chest and went completely through his body. Okay, now wait. Early the following morning, the body of a young newspaper reporter, Tom Fisher, was found in the Gulf, just off Gulfport. He'd been murdered in exactly the same way. Dave, that report's my Charleston office. About the distributor who was peddling the phony sweepstake tickets. Didn't he say something about a sword? Right, Peters. He said that anyone in the racket who squealed died horribly by a golden sword. Wait a minute now. Let's take a look at this map here. Oh. What's this? Here's Orengo, where you said that paper mill's located. Mm -hmm. And here's Gulfport. About a hundred miles away. Peters, we've got to shortcut the job of tracing this paper. I want you to grab the first plane for Gulfport and go to work. Now, Mr. Fisher, try to recall. Did your husband tell you where he was going that night? The last time you saw him? I asked him, but he wouldn't tell me, Mr. Peters. I begged him not to go. Now, try to put yourself in. Come on, now. I'm sorry. That's it. Now, Tom's editor, his uncle, said Tom didn't have any real clue to the men behind the phony speech stage racket. Did Tom tell you anything that he didn't tell his uncle? No. Tom said he just looked around the room of that poor man who'd been murdered. Frenchy, yes. Now, try to remember, Mrs. Fisher, this is very important. Tom may have said something which we might use as a clue. Some some little thing. But he didn't. We had a rule. Something. Yes? A, a poker chip. A golden poker chip. A poker chip? Only this one was gold, and it had the picture of a bull on it. Tom said he found it in Frenchy's room. Well, ordinary poker chips aren't usually gold. They're white, red, or blue. But they do have gold chips for high-priced ones in gambling houses. Are there any gambling houses in Gulfport, you know? Not in town, but there's a ship out in the Gulf, a converted yacht, where people go to dine and dance and gamble. El Toro, it's called. It's very popular. El Toro. Toro means bull in Spanish, and there was a picture of a bull on the chip your husband had. Oh. Mr. Peters, do you think that's where Tom went that night? It could be. That's where I'm going now. I'll go with you. No, no, Mr. Fisher. This might be dangerous. I don't care. I want to find the man who killed my husband. Mr. Fisher, that's my job. You stay here and I'll keep in touch with you. I'll see you later. Good evening, Peter. Ruth Fisher, what are you doing here? I told you I want to find the man who killed my husband. And I told you to... Well, what's the use? You're here now. Have you found out anything? No, not yet. I've been circulating around in the crowd, but so... Say, there it is again. What? You hear that sound? Kind of dull hammering. It's coming from below decks. Yes, I hear it. It's probably the yacht's in. But we're not moving. Ventilator pumps? No. Sounds more like... 
What? There's too much noise in here. Come out on deck where we can hear better. Hmm? Yes. Pardon me. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Mr. Peters. Wait. Yes, by George. I think I know what that sound is. What? A printing press. A printing press out here on the boat? I'm sure it is. It seems to be coming from below decks. Come on, Mrs. Fisher. The stairs are over this way. Look out, Mr. Peters. There are two men behind you. What? Oh! That does it. Oh, you killed Mr. Peters. Just a moment, we'll return to Counter Spy. Brought to you by Pepsi Cola. Pepsi Cola hits the spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. Lots more value, lots more zest. Why take less when Pepsi's best? More and more, among fellows and girls, among mothers and dads, you hear that sane and sensible question Why take less when Pepsi is best? No budget, no allowance ever had a better friend than tangy, sparkling Pepsi Cola. Because one big 12 ounce Pepsi bottle gives you two delicious drinks. That's twice as much tangy taste, twice as much delicious Pepsi to go just twice as far. That's why more and more families say, why take less when Pepsi's best? Yes, families like yours and mine, families all over America, they're all saying, why take less when Pepsi's best? Pepsi Cola hits the spot, tastes terrific when you're hot, more and better than the rest. Why take less when Pepsi's best? Today, tomorrow, always. Get America's biggest cola value. Take home a carton of six big, big Pepsi bottles. Insist on Pepsi at the store. And say Pepsi at the fountain. Say Pepsi at the stand. Say Pepsi. Whenever you reach for refreshment, remember... Why take less when Pepsi's best? And now, back to Counter Spy and David Harding in Washington. Ferguson. Yes, Mr. Harding. Any word from Peters in Gulfport yet? Not a thing. I'm worried, Mr. Harding. So am I. I'm flying down to Gulfport. I was hoping you'd say that. Call the airport. Tell them to get a plane ready. Then call Merck Kennedy at the field office in Dallas. Tell him to meet me in Gulfport. I'm leaving at once. Wake up, Senor Peters. <clears throat> Wake up, I say. Stop uh, hitting him, you brute. You be silent, Senor Fisher. Or you get it, too. Senor Peter, wake up. Uh, it's morning. You've morning. been asleep all night. Johnny sure gave him an awful track on the noggin, Toro. Yeah, but he's not dead yet. So wake up, you pig of a counter spy. What? what? Who are... Coming, too. Well. Take these ropes off my arms and up. You'll do nothing, senor. Except what I tell you. Who are you? I? I am El Toro. El Toro? Oh. You run this gambling ship and the... See. See, the gambling ship and all else you came to find. Amigo, you wish both yourself and the charming senor Fisher to... Uh... Yes, huh? Naturally. Well, then all you need to do is to send a telegram to your, um, uh, how do you say, uh, chief in Washington, the great David Hardy. You say to him, you uh, have investigated, and the headquarters of the sweepstake is not in Gulfport, as you think first. Put in the small town of Veranoche over in Mexico, and you say you go there now. Hey, that's good, sir. And after I send this wire, taking the heat off you, Mrs. Fisher and I get bumped off, hmm? oh, 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 no, no, amigo. After a short while, you're made free. You think I'm dumb enough to believe that? I know you killed that poor bum, Frenchie, and you killed Tom Fisher. <gasps> oh, you grieve me, amigo, to doubt my word. But you listen to me, then. You, I promise nothing. But send the telegram. And the senor will not be harmed. 
I promise. I wouldn't trust you as far as I could throw the animal you're named after. Very well, then, Senor Peters. Observe. Here is my gold-hilted matador sword, with which I dispatched the treacherous Frenchy and reporter. Now, you do as I say, or I kill Senor Fisher here right before your eyes. No! Well, what do you say, Senor? Okay, I'll send the wire. Now you're talking. Bueno, bueno. There's a telegraph pad here on my desk and pen and ink. Now, write. All right. Untie my hands. That is simple. With the sword. <clears throat> but try nothing rash, amigo. I know what I'm with. Let's see. It's not much ink in this ink well. Oh, there's enough for the purpose. Uh, it's enough to blind you for a moment. <laughs> Blind. No, you don't. You throw things in my eyes. You are a killer. Look out! 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 Look Here they come. I'll be able to hold them off with Monk's gun for a while. But there's only one bullet left in it. I just had a session with Gulfport Sheriff, Mr. Harding. Two fellas killed, Frenchy and Tom Fisher. Two folks disappear, Peters and Mrs. Fisher. But the sheriff has plumb out ideas. Well, we'll have to find Peters and Mrs. Fisher without him then, Kennedy. Did you see the newspaper editor? Cyrus Manning, yes. He's young Fisher's uncle, and he's afraid of something. And I have an idea, but I can't do anything about it until I hear. Maybe that's the call I want now. Howdy speaking. Oh, yes, Mr. King. Have you got that shipping figure? Good, let's have it. Four, four point six seven tons. Thanks very much. No, no, that's all I need right now. Thanks again. Goodbye. My hunch was right, Kennedy. Now, I've got a plan, but I'll need your help. I'm going back to see Cyrus Manning, editor of the Gulf Port Gazette. And I... You want your niece, Ruth Fisher, to be found, and you want the killers of your nephew brought to justice, isn't that right? Naturally, Mr. Harding. Well, then tell me who killed your nephew and who's responsible for your niece's disappearance. I don't know. You're afraid to talk. You're afraid you'll be killed, too, by the golden sword. That's... that's not true. But, Mr. Manning, the men you're protecting can't afford to let you live. You know too much. Your only chance to save your life is to confide in me. Those fellows may be planning to murder you at this very moment. Look out, Mr. Manning. Get on the floor. Good heavens. Somebody Lord. shot at you from the window. Come back here. Too bad, Mr. Manning. He got away. Mr. Manning. You all right? Yeah. Yes. I think so. Good heavens. See, I told you. You were in great danger. Use your head, man. Talk before it's too late. Get away from the door, Toro, or I'll shoot again. I have counted your cock, Senor Peters. You don't have no bullets left. Now, come on, amigos. We break down the door. Now, together. Are you right, Mr. Peters? Are all the bullets really gone? Yes, Ruth. I tried to bluff him, and he called my bluff. Oh, dear. Mr. Peters, the door is cracking. I'm afraid it won't be long now. Well, there's the gambling ship, Mr. Hardy. The El Toro. Right, Kennedy. Bring us in alongside, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. 
Now, Mr. Hardy, aren't you scared there's innocent patrons aboard? No launches have come out here all day, Kennedy. All right, men, check your weapons. Prepare to board. Lieutenant, head us in. Cut your engine. Inside, Mr. Hardy, and the deck's empty. I don't like it, Kennedy. I sent six men down the port side. You want us to go up on this side? Now, let's go. That's a trap. Hit the deck, men! Return their fire! Mr. Harding, El Toro himself, caught hiding up forward. Peters must have winged him. Toro, meet Mr. Harding. I, uh, I bow to a greater matador than my friend. Uh, save that baloney for your trial, Toro. All right, Kennedy, handcuff, and hold him aboard our cutter. Peters, you all right? Found us a dollar, Dave. Good. So these are the presses Toro used for printing the phony sweepstake tickets. Yes. Pretty clever setting them up down here in the hold, hmm? Well, he'll never print any more tickets, Peters. That ex-bullfighter is going to the electric chair. By the way, Dave, Kennedy told me about the trick you and he pulled on Manning, the newspaper editor. Firing blank shots near him to make him think Toro was after him, so he'd talk. Oh, fortunately, it worked. How did you happen to suspect that smooth old mint tulip was part of this gang? When the Southwest paper mill reported that the Gulfport Gazette bought super newsprint from them, I checked their shipping records against Manning's daily inventory. The inventory was short, which made me suspect that Manning was diverting paper to Toro for his sweepstake ticket. Well, it was all a well-concealed connection, Dave. Yes, Toro was very clever with his golden sword, but he'll find it won't cut the lock to the death house door. <laughs> When your friends drop in, be generous, but be thrifty, too. Serve plenty of delicious Pepsi-Cola. Pepsi's big 12-ounce bottle gives you not just one sparkling glass full, but two. Get a carton of six and serve 12 delicious drinks. Yes, Pepsi is America's biggest cola value. You get twice the tangy taste, twice the refreshment, twice the Pepsi. So why take less when Pepsi is best? Whenever you reach for refreshment, remember... Pepsi-Cola hits the spot, two full glasses, that's a lot. Lots more value, lots more zest. Why take less when Pepsi's best? This is David Harding. A special word to employers. Give work to our handicapped veterans. Next time a job opens, write to Captain Maurice Witherspoon, Masonic Veterans Committee, 71 West 23rd Street, New York City. Give our fighting men a fighting chance for rehabilitation. Tune in every Tuesday and Thursday, same time, same station to Counterspy. Listen on Thursday for the exciting Counterspy case of the genuine counterfeit. In the case of the genuine counterfeits, we face a baffling situation of mixed identities. Two men died, yet who were they? One man lived while another hovered between life and death. And a subtle criminal came within minutes of getting away with a long-prepared, carefully rehearsed plot. The decisive clue, a knife in a man's hand. I invite you to be tuned in on Thursday, day after tomorrow, for... Case of the Genuine Counterfeit on Counterspy. Tonight's Counterspy program originated in New York, was directed by Leonard L. Bass, and featured Don McLaughlin and Mandel Kramer, with music by Jesse Crawford. Counter Spy is a Phillips H. Lord production for Pepsi Cola. Enjoy some Pepsi. Ice cold tonight. Mm-hmm.